Thousands of people go missing every year in the United States alone, never to be found. Could you become one of them? When Gary Butler returned home after work on January 25, 2006 to find his two sons, ages two and four, left unattended, he knew something was wrong. His wife Teresa was nowhere to be found, and she would have never left the children alone. Panicked, he contacted police, who immediately began working on the case. With no signs of forced entry or a struggle, and with the children having no idea where their mother went or how she went about leaving, it began to seem like Teresa just up and left. There were few items missing, however, their absence was strange. The items missing included a video camera, a flashlight, Teresa's purse and cell phone, a PlayStation with games, and a stereo from the couple's Jeep. One thing left behind were Teresa's rings. She took them off every night before bed, and where she left them, that's where they remained, untouched. She also left her jacket behind, something you don't normally leave the house without during the winter months. What makes this all the stranger is that Teresa's cell phone had made two calls after her disappearance, both to two separate people who had never heard of Teresa or any of the Butler family. And when they answered the phone, no one was on the line. Eight years later, and all questions remain unanswered as her family, friends, and the entire community still try to find Teresa Butler. Foul play is suspected in her disappearance. In 1998, 19-year-old Tara Calico had a very tight schedule. On top of studying to become a psychologist, she held down a job at a local bank and liked to remain fit with activities such as tennis and bike riding. Tara took off for a bike ride on Highway 47, a short distance from her New Mexico home. Before she left, she asked her mother to come and get her if she wasn't back by noon, just in case she had managed to get a flat tire something she was familiar with in the past. Tara wasn't back by noon, so her mother promptly left to go and retrieve her. But Tara and the bicycle she was riding were both gone. Police discovered a cassette tape thought to have belonged to Tara in the dirt near where she was riding, with bike tracks nearby. Almost 20 miles further, they found a Sony Walkman that was believed to have also belonged to Tara. Her mother claimed she was sure that her daughter was leaving a trail for them to follow, but help was unable to do so. The case nearly went cold until a year later when a photograph was discovered in a parking lot in Florida. The picture depicted what was widely believed to be Tara alongside a young boy who resembled Michael Henley Jr. who also inexplicably went missing from New Mexico in the same year but whose body was later found not far from where he disappeared. Beside Tara rested a book by V.C. Andrews who friends of Tara claimed was her favorite author. Many years later, Tara's parents both ended up passing away, never knowing whatever happened to their daughter. Tips continue to come in over Tara's disappearance as authorities still, over a quarter of a century later, try to put the puzzle pieces together. The Bradley family were enjoying their time on a cruise through the Caribbean, having as much fun as any family should. That was before everything turned upside down when 23-year-old daughter Amy went missing aboard the ship. Amy had been having a great time, dancing most of the night. She returned to her room early in the morning, went out for a cigarette on the balcony, and from there, disappeared. Some speculated that she might have fallen overboard and drowned. However, Amy being a lifeguard and a very powerful swimmer, this wasn't seen as a viable possibility. Though the ship was docked very shortly after Amy was reported missing and thorough searches were initiated, Amy was never found. Some witnesses claimed they had seen Amy in an elevator with a member of the cruise ship's band around the time she disappeared. Since her disappearance, Amy has been spotted a number of times, most notably by a former Navy sailor who was visiting a brothel. He recalled that he was approached at the bar by a woman who introduced herself as Amy Bradley and claimed she needed his help. However, she was promptly escorted out of the room by two men. The sailor, afraid for being reprimanded by the Navy for being inside of a brothel, didn't report the event until months later, and by then the brothel had burned down. It would be years later before another substantial clue surfaced, and this time it was in the form of an email to Amy's parents. It contained a picture of Amy, dressed in revealing clothing on a bed, allegedly taken off of a South American prostitution website. Though nothing developed further after this, and Amy still, to this day, remains missing.
Diane Augen had a troubled past involving alcohol and drug abuse. On top of this, she also suffered from bipolar disorder, which she required medication for. Without her medication, Diane left her residence in Odessa, Florida at 11 a.m. on April 10, 1998. Never to be seen by family or friends ever again. However, that wasn't the last she was heard from. Three days after she went missing, Diane's mother came home to find a very eerie message left on her answering machine. The message was from her daughter, who said aloud, Help! Help! Let me out! Sounds could be heard consistent with someone trying to take the phone away from Diane, and the last thing she was able to say was, Hey! Give me that! before the call ended. The caller ID read one word, Starlight, and when Diane's mother promptly tried calling back, no one answered. It would be only three days before another sign of Diane would come to surface. But this one, even eerier than the last. A witness had claimed that he had seen Diane walking around 20 miles away from her home only one day after she was reported missing. It was this area where the severed tip of Diane's right middle finger was found on the side of the road. Still, authorities had no idea where to look for Diane. I mean, it is Florida after all, why should they know what they're doing? But the case had more to offer. Two weeks after Diane's disappearance, a customer approached an ice freezer outside of a convenience store in Odessa. Opening it, they discovered a bag. Inside the bag were neatly folded clothes. The clothes belonged to Diane. Two years later, though unconfirmed to be hers, Diane's brother's girlfriend made a discovery in a convenience store in Pasco, Florida, when he found a clear bag with the name Diane written on it in black marker. Inside it were items consistent with what Diane would have owned. Diane had been treated at a mental health facility shortly before her disappearance, and her mother believed that she should have never been released. Seems her mother was right. Diane hasn't been seen since. However, for obvious reasons, she is assumed dead. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of any of these people, please contact the appropriate law enforcement office right away. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Be sure to show the artists of this series some love by liking her fan page linked in the description below. Also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel because you won't want to miss what's next.